Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 399. 399. Whoa. 399. This is the final of the 300 series. This is it. It's crazy. It's Tuesday, May the 12th, 2015. Tonight, we are going to learn how to create the graphics that are necessary in order to order online a custom stamp using our own handwriting. I would like to say this was a actual request of mine. So <laughs> this is She's controlling the show, folks. Yeah. It's like how do we do this? Speaking, Let's talk about it. <laughs> Speaking of the show, here's what's coming <laughs> up in the category 5.tv newsroom. Four of the nearly 50 self-driving cars on the road have been in accidents. An innovative smart facial recognition cane for the visually impaired gives the visually impaired people the ability to identify their families and friends instantly. Verizon is buying AOL for nearly four and a half billion dollars. Users of MapMaker have been vandalizing Google Maps, forcing them to shut down the service. And Daimler has launched a fully autonomous transport truck. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to the show. It's Tuesday, the, uh, the 12th of May. And it's episode 399. It's really hard to believe we're a week away from episode 400. We're going to tell you what's going on a little bit later in the show. I think I'd like to know exactly how many episodes I've been on. Like, I should go count back and you find can... out what mine is. Sure. Well, let's use the magic of television. Okay. And go over to category5.tv. Okay. And here we're going to go uh, about our team. And we're going to go down here, and we're going to go Sasha Dermatis. Right. Read Sasha's bio. Oh, probably not. It's probably really old. And, and the, <laughs> now these are the number of episodes that you have hosted on the co-host desk. Not the number of episodes that you are actually participating in because of the fact that you're on a different desk. Right. So that's so what I'm interested triple in. triple it. Oh wow! You know what? Well, you know what we'll do. I will take it as a challenge, and programmatically, I will add all of the episodes that you have been on the news desk to the counter there. Yes, I require my count to be accurate. Okay. My bio is no longer accurate. For the, the record, count. I have been on 399 episodes. Oh, let the record show. Yeah. It is your show, though. That's hard to believe, eh? I've been on it every is. newsroom show. Yes. Episode in season eight. Oh, uh, oh, the, uh, the newsroom itself. The newsroom, the show. proper. Yes. Yes. I see. Not just the, the not my show, the right. newsroom. Yeah, my show, the newsroom. It's so confusing. Also, the one and only Try It, Buy It episode. <laughs> More coming soon. More coming. We were talking about this before the show. It's Content is coming and you're working on, it's really finding the products and then investing in the products to review them. Exactly. And and finding products that you, the viewers, are going to be interested in because I think that's that's important because it's all about uh, finding a product that you're going to want to jump onto Amazon and purchase because that's how we afford to uh, to be able to create the show. Exactly. So. so I think I have one in the works. Ooh. So. I should interrupt though and tell you. Category 5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, Cat5.tv slash IAIB. That was smooth. Not bad, eh? I feel like you should have had your own like jingle music underneath. And I almost have that memorized. Wait, so wait. 
Is there a jingle music now? No, nope, that was the applause. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it. <laughs> So. I would like to thank uh, everyone who's contributed to the show this week. Uh, mm-hmm. We have had some donations come in, uh, monetary donations to help us with our expenses. Um, if you go to donate.category5.tv, you'll see that we do have some pretty pressing needs right now. Uh, one of the things that we're encountering as we grow, uh, because we're no longer just Category 5 Technology TV, we now have several shows, and you'll notice, notice that if you've got our Roku ch- uh, channel installed on your Roku device, that we're expanding into multiple shows. And, of course, we've got multiple YouTube channels and you can follow through and figure out you know, the, the connection between them all. But as we produce more and more shows, it means a lot more hard drive space is being used. Right. So where Category 5 Technology TV uses about 40 gigs a week, and then we compress and then we can remove some of the temporary files and things to free up some space. Uh, as, we, as we continue to grow, other shows are taking up space too, and we're eating through server storage space on our storage servers uh, much faster than we ever have before. In fact, last week's Category 5 Technology TV pushed us over the threshold, and so I actually had to start nitpicking and removing things from the server, which I don't like to do. Which is scary. It's dangerous, because as soon as you start deleting things, what if you accidentally delete the wrong thing? And I'm very, very careful. But we are at that point now where we're having to remove things in order to have space for the show going forward. That reminds me. There's also emergency things that we end up needing, like Mm -hmm. the printer has recently bit bit the dust. Yeah, gave up the ghost. (laughs) Um, And we've been doing (laughs) everything that we can. I put new ink cartridges in today and... Every just to give little you an idea. thing, yeah. We've been yeah. squinting the past couple of the weeks. The last couple of weeks, yeah, it has looked like you know the when you go to the um, what are they called the <laughs> optometrist. Yes, can you can you read Is, any of that? Right. That's kind of that's with new ink cartridges. I think our heads are dead, and yeah. so I can replace the heads. That's pricey. Um, this is with a new ink cartridge. That's our alignment page. That's not looking too good. So, no. needless to say, we're not working with printouts today, and and that is, you know, like you say, one and of those unexpens- unexpected expenses. Right. So it's little things that you can do. So shop on the affiliate links, and if you mm-hmm. can, just donate. Right. Yeah, so. donations, uh, monetary donations help a lot, and and of course, shopping with uh, Amazon helps because that turns into it translates into a monetary contribution because they send mm-hmm. us uh, a, a percentage of your purchase. Um, so anything that helps monetarily is is really really helpful right now. You know that in the past couple of weeks we've had problems with the amount of sunlight that comes in on our our studio wall here. Uh, we've got a big window there that has never been a problem before, but because right. it's staying brighter later, now all of a sudden it's a problem. So we've got to get drapes on those, yeah. and you know all these little things. And then there's all the stuff that we want to be able to do. For example, um, New Every Day is a great new show on Category Five TV Network, and we're using the old handheld. Um, consumer camera that Category 5 Technology TV used to use. So the quality is very, very low as far as the the resolution or the 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 just the general quality of the the video recording. We'd like to be able to upgrade them. Mm -hmm. And my idea is we've been working toward getting a 4K camera in Studio D. And if we could do that, then maybe we can take this camera and move it down the line, get a better camera on the newsroom set, right. move our other camera down the line to new every day and, and do that kind of thing so that we're not having to buy three new cameras. But by buying one camera, we can now take this camera and move it and to the ha- newsroom. And do hand-me-downs, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody ends up with a better camera. The newsroom is going to look better than ever in that case because we'll be able to have a, a right. nice uh, DSLR run. I need newsroom. to know before that happens so I can make sure I always have my hair and makeup done. Uh, right now, I'm just a little bit blurred in the newsroom, which is perfect for me. I it's come here the Gaussian blur. Yes. Yeah, you think I've got perfect complexion, but really. Yeah. Wait till you see. You'll be like, wow, she really does look her age. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, anything. I mean, if you're if you're talking to friends and they're buying things on Amazon, just say, "Hey, yeah. here's a great idea." You know, use this just link. Use the link. It's pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, but we do have a growing number of expenses here, and those are just, uh, you know, to give you some examples of some of the needs that we have. Uh, and we've got some little things that we need to do here at the studio, and then, of course, it's coming up on July, so we're, our rent is going to be going up. And there's all these these things. We've got to uh, pay for our insurance again. We pay it on an annual basis. Right. So all these things kind of build up. And so right now, you hear us talking about donating a little bit more than usual, and that's because the expenses are on the increase. So, mm-hmm. uh, so we do appreciate you 
you helping us out if you're able. Uh, and any amount is a great help. Head on over to donate.category5.tv. You'll see a little list of some of the needs that we have there, and you'll be able to designate. You can actually specifically say, I'd like this contribution to go toward, and you can select from the drop-down list as to what you'd like it to do. So we appreciate that. Select printer, please. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't added printer yet, but you can put it under general expenses. Yeah, that's important too. This is a new need that new just came need. up today. Yeah. So, yeah, any donation is definitely welcome. Very much. Super. All right, on with the show. What are we doing? Tonight, we're going to learn to create a, a cool little stamp object. And we're, we're going to be doing it with Staples Business Depot because they've got the online service to do it. You could use any service, but really what we're doing tonight is learning the... Uh, the methods that are needed in order to create the image so mm -hmm. that you can do things with your signature or with handwritten notes. In, in this in instance, we're doing something kind of unique, and Sasha's going to tell us a little bit about that, but we're, we're creating a stamp. Right. But I, we could also use this for, say, digitally adding your signature to a document, uh, being able to add it to, um, to things that you print out. And so you know, keep that in the back of your mind as well. You may not want to make a stamp, but you may be able to use this for something else as well. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing here today? Okay, so here's the problem that I run into a lot at work. I like to write a little, you know, personalized thank you on the back of receipts when I give them to tables. That's nice, yeah. Right? But sometimes I'll have, you know, pop in groups of 20 or 22 people and they're oh, all, separate, all checks. separate checks. <laughs> and I mean, if everybody asks for their check at the same time, I have yep. 25 different pieces of paper. I can't wow. write thank you on the back of each one. And then I feel like people don't understand that I really do care. So right. I was thinking, what if I had a stamp and I could write, like I could just stamp it. So I had the idea and then everybody at work was saying that it was totally lazy of me. <laughs> So, I think that was my first comment. Right? I think it's actually the name of the show tonight, how to create stamps so that you can sign things the lazy way. It's not lazy. <laughs> it's proactive. So I was messing around on the Staples website, and yeah. it was all just text. And I was like, oh, this does look tacky. Right. But then I saw that there was an attach image option. Ah, so yes. yeah. if I turned my signature, like my actual handwritten, like, like thank you, smiley face, <laughs> Sasha, into a stamp image... Right? And then stamp it. Nobody will know that I'm doing things the lazy way. It's not lazy. <laughs> it's caring. Don't worry. If you order any signed merchandise from the uh, Category 5 shop, we will make sure she does not use her stamp. You know what? If you would like, I will stamp something for you and send it to you for a small donation. <laughs> <laughs> I have 50,000 oh stamps, goodness. I think, in the stamp. Yeah. Well, well what else future. could you use this idea for? You, I could, mean you could use it for... Uh, Lots of paperwork things. Yeah. You know, like yeah, if, if you're you, putting out a lot of even oh, checks or. You know what? If you're doing thank you cards or invitations for your upcoming wedding or go. anything, you could get your, you know, handwritten return address instead of a stamp. Hey, that's a neat idea. And, and yeah. yeah, when we do mail outs for Category 5, I've never thought of this, but we usually have a stack of envelopes and I have to hand write our postal box on the return address. Yeah. so I could use labels, but I'd never, I'd, I prefer to do the handwritten it, thing. Because it's nice. It's sweet stamp, to do a handwritten. Stamp. It feels stamp. good. Yeah. That'd be cool. Now you know. <laughs> that's a good idea. You could also um, get one made with your handwritten signature and send us that along with your blank checkbook, and that would help with the show, you know, and that would be great. Robbie's the king of comedy. But um bum bum. <laughs> okay, so if you'd like to find out what how we're doing this, it's cat5.tv slash stamp. Nice and simple. Uh, but it starts really with a blank piece of paper. Yes. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be transferring an image and what they're thinking when they do this is you're going to maybe have a nice font or something like that. But why not actually hand draw this or hand write it? Right. Have a little smiley face and do that kind of idea. Uh, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. So the things to keep in mind, I mean, when they're creating something like this, they ask for a black and white image. Do you know why that is? Um, because it's easier. Because <laughs> they have to have two very opposite ends of the spectrum to know this is the extrude oh, okay. and this is not extruded. So that they so black on white is a really good way to do it because the black is going to very vividly tell their automated system right. that is what the stamp 
is supposed okay. to be extruded. And then from there, you can va- vary and do like red or purple or blue once Correct. you upload. Yes, you can change the color of it once right. you've uploaded it. So using paper such as you know this kind of stuff would not be a good idea because it's got lines on it. It's a little bit colored. Mm-hmm. We want to use really Stark. good quality white paper. So... The, f- the first thing that I asked you was how big are the receipts. Right. So you brought in a receipt just so that we could get a bit of a measurement. So Okay. Because we want to make sure that the stamp that you're going to get created is going to be able to stamp these receipts. Yeah. And not go over or be itty bitty it because that wouldn't look, make any sense, it right? It can't look tacky. It can't, it, it can't look, look overly fake either. It, yeah, it has to look legit. Yeah. Okay. Know? So I brought a measuring tape and we've got three inches is the width of this. So okay. that's cool. All right. So what we're going to do is go over to cat5.tv slash staples. Okay. Just like it sounds. Cat5.tv slash staples. And that's going to take you right over to their system, which is... Or is it going to go? Cat5.tv slash staples. Let's try a different browser. In case I got a DNS issue. What's DNS mean? Domain name service. Oh, okay. Sometimes your computer will cache. What did I, I like, what did I type in? I don't I was looking at the camera. Now I'm curious. I think I <laughs> Oh, I typed in staples. That's why. No, it's cat5.tv slash stamp. Did I say yes. staples this whole time? I don't know. I'm thinking staples because we're talking <gasps> staples. Cat5.tv slash stamp. stamp. Not there staples, you go. Stamp. Not staples. Just happens to be staples. Okay. okay. So we've got a custom pro stamp. This is the one that we're going for, right? So this is right yes. here. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to click on shop now. Twenty-seven forty-five is the starting price. And how it basically works is it's going to be more expensive the larger it is. And you'll see that it it's self inking. It's going to create a stamp that is going to automatically flip over and ink itself. Perfect. That's cool, right? So you don't have to go bump, 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 bump. Because that would get be more obvious. Even. I'm trying to do yeah. this discreetly. <laughs> <laughs> People would be like, what is wow, that noise? She has very consistent penmanship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that table of 22 people, they're all going to look at the back of their receipt at the same time and go, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to know, are you, you're going to use this for the table of two as well, aren't you? I'm going to use gonna, that always. You're just going to love this. I'm going to love it. All right. So what we're going to what we're going to do with our our pre inked pro stamp is go choose by size because we know the size of our uh, receipt. So the width is what we're looking at because height is not all that important. We've got the height of a receipt; it doesn't right. really matter. The width is going to be all right. What do we've got? One and three eighths inches. Right. That's too small. Yes. One and fifteen sixteenths inches. Why didn't That's they just make it two? That's very specific. Why didn't they just make it two inches? What? Fifteen sixteenths Fif- of an inch. How, that's tiny. Like the uh, the leftover part, the part that's not be, there is gotta tiny. Gotta be really accurate with this website here. All right. Uh, what do we got? Two and I three quarters. That, that's I awfully that's, close. That's pretty good. And then this one's three and a half. So that's too big. Which is good because it's also too expensive. Two and three quarters. <laughs> At fifty three eighty five. Okay. All right. So that's I think with a three inch wide receipt, and this is the width of your receipts, right? We yes. measured it's three inches. So two and three quarters. If we pull out two and three quarters on our measuring tape, that's going to be right about there. So it's going to have a quarter inch on either side, basically a little bit less than that. It's fantabulous. Is that perfect? That's perfect. All right. So that's what we're going to go with, and I'm going to show you a little trick here uh, because we want. Uh, we want to make sure that our images are going to work within their template, right? Right. So we're going to use free software. I'm on Linux. You can do this on Windows, Mac, whatever. Uh, we're going to use the GNU image manipulation program to do this. But it's going to start with actually um, signing this as if it was the back of your receipt. Okay. So I'm imagining that this is that there's a receipt on that page. Let's get you okay. a black pen. Because we might that's, have to do this a couple of times over that's fine. because let me tell you, I don't have. The best writing. People today, today, in fact, I was talking to some table today yeah. because they were trying to figure out what my name was. Because I wrote, thank you, <laughs> Sasha. And they're like, is your name Susie? Spelt S-U-S. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, and then no. you're like, you wait. Wait and see. I Pretty soon I will be much more consistent with my signatures. <laughs> exactly. All right. So this is what she writes on the back of your receipt, folks. She's a waitress as well as a television superstar international. 
I should probably close that A so it looks like an A. <laughs> and not a U. <laughs> Does that look okay, good? are you happy with that? Are you guys happy about with you that? Folks at Can home? we just vote on this, please? So uh, that would be on the back of your receipt. receipt. You that would be happy good, with eh? that, right? I think that looks pretty good. Okay. I think so. All right. Do you? Perfect. Yeah, I think so. Um, the the when I look at this from a graphic standpoint, now the re, the stamp itself is going to be quite a bit wide. It's going to be on the wide spectrum. It's wider than it is tall. Oh, right. right. So if we're to use this, way, the way I would see that is we're going to have a fair bit of white space on the left and right. So it's going to kind of end up like this. Okay. So you're going to end up with that kind of centered with white space on the left and right. Okay. So if that's cool, that's cool. Okay. Is that cool? I think it's cool. All right. What I'll probably do is I will never like squarely stamp either. I'll, You'll you know, pivot I'll it a probably little bit. pivot a bit just to make it Get look, a second you know. stamp that has like different emoticons that you can stamp. And All right. Well, okay. let's give it a go. Okay. The next, the, if you're happy with that, because this is a pretty permanent decision once we upload this to Staples. I'm happy with it. You it can tell great. that my name is Sasha on that, not Sushi yes. or Sushi. <laughs> well, we're going to pull out an old piece of technology here, kids. This is called a scanner. And uh, it's basically like a digital camera that you set things on. <laughs> kind of like that. So on Linux, I've got a program called Simple Scan. And uh, we're going to use that to scan in this image. I've got a, uh, a nice Cana scan LIDE35, something like that. And uh, they're very high resolution. I'm going to scan in at 1200 DPI. So simple scan. And let's make sure we're scanning as a photo. And let's give it a go. So that's going to pull in a copy. Now, you could use a digital camera for this, but you're going to then be dealing with light. Right. Nice thing about a scanner is I've put it in there. It's nice and flat. And it, there's not going to be any light changing causing any kind of gray gradients or anything across that, the page. That makes sense. If you were to take it with a, a camera and you've got a light over there, it's going to actually kind of come down on the page at an angle and you're going to have a little bit darker here than it is here and then you're going to have to deal with that so that it doesn't end up extruding that. Right, because right. then it would look tacky. It certainly would look different. <laughs> yeah. Here it comes. So it's scanning in, and they're rather slow when uh, when you're scanning in at a high resolution. I prefer to work in a, a very high resolution, Sasha, so that we can make sure that this is going to, to work very, very well for you. You have no clue how much this episode is making my heart sing. I love Category 5, and I'm here every week and understand sometimes nothing. <laughs> Not you're, nothing. You're I understand. I'm learning. I'm learning things, but sometimes it's deep. And this I get. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't like deep, this is the episode for you. This is just Sasha draws a picture and it turns into a stamp. <laughs> that's the new name for the episode. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, here it comes. Almost there. Looks See, good. You can tell how grateful I am you visited. Right there in the in that. In the stamp. Yeah. It's great. Okay, it's coming through. Okay. And I think we've got enough of it now that I can Stop the scanner and set to crop. Okay. And here we go. Going to grab that image. Just like that. And we're going to save that. All right. Sasha1. Dot, let's do ping. Dot PNG. And why are we going to do that? Because ping is a lossless format. It is not going to add any kind of anomalies like a JPEG will. JPEG yeah. will cause a little bit of a, a pixelation on some of the finer lines. Ping okay. Will not. Okay, because I saw that in order to attach an image, it had to be in ping, which I didn't even know was a thing, oh, okay. or PNG. Yeah, PNG, so. ping. Um, they, they probably want you to use that because it's, they know it's going to give you a better result. As you, right. the, especially lines like a signature are going to come out a lot clearer uh, with a ping file than they would with a JPEG. So why so, do people ever use JPEG? JPEG is compressed, so it's a much smaller file f size. Oh, right? okay. So comparatively, now that picture, that scan, just to give you an idea, is 15.5 megabytes. That's pretty huge. On the other hand, if I save that exact same image as a JPEG, right, right, 
and because it's compressed, export that, you'll notice now the JPEG is only uh, 2.4 megabytes. Holy Hannah. It's a huge oh, okay. difference. So JPEG is used for emailing photos. Um, cameras use oh, it to okay. take photos that are not in RAW mode so that they can take quick photos because they're very, very small compressed photos and they won't eat up the space on your card like a like a raw file would. Okay. In our case, we want ping because it's lossless, higher quality, but it is a much larger file. All right. I, so My signature is right now very big. There you go. <laughs> yes, and it actually is. You can see the grain on the paper with a, a quality scanner like this, um, and that's what we want Goodness. to get out of the image so that it's nice and clean for them to use. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna crop around this so that we get rid of any of the outside lines and things like that. So we're just gonna go crop to selection. And then we're gonna use the levels tool. So we're gonna go colors, levels, and this is where we can pull out some of those shadows. See those shadows at the right hand side there? Mm -hmm. See that? I can pull that out and we're gonna get rid of some of that paper grain. See how that works? Oh. So we go from that, which is the paper grain, and that's what this that big hump is there, it's actually just showing me visually that that's the grain of the paper. Now I can pull that out just like that. And now we have a nice white background. I'm gonna bring that in there, and then I'm gonna darken your text a little bit. So it's nice and solid. Okay. okay. So this is the levels tool, and it does take a little bit of practice to get levels right, understanding that on the right-hand side of the spectrum is your shadow, on the left-hand side of the spectrum is your light highlights and things like that. Oh, okay. So then once I've adjusted, and the initial adjustment is done visually, so you see that hump on the right-hand side? I've moved mm -hmm. this line here to be um, on the opposite edge of the hump. Right. Over here, there's another little hump, so I've placed that on the similarly other. on the oh, okay. inside. And then this one here in the middle actually adjusts within that space so I can lighten it oh, okay. or darken it. And I want your text to be rather thick. Right. So you notice as I make that darker, your text is being affected, but what doesn't happen is that that grain of the paper does not come back because it's okay. outside of the threshold that we set through those first two right. points. Right, okay. Well, that's perfect. So then I'll find that spot. I hope nobody's um, analyzing my handwriting right now and like, <laughs> writes back. Psychoanalyzing. <laughs> exactly. Sasha slightly unstable. Her A's are not completely <laughs> formed. It's curved slightly to the left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so there we go. Now, if we go in, you can see that there is still some fuzziness around the edges, but that's okay. One of the things that I want to do is get rid of some of the little um, grain that we don't need to be there, like that thing in the middle there. We'll just kind of clean it up with the eraser tool because okay. you don't want it to end up. And they will probably uh, clean up the edges fairly well as well. But we've done a, a nice job. See, as you look at it in the size that it's going to be, mm -hmm. approximately, it's going to look pretty good. Okay, next step. And, and see, that, of course, can be used for anything. If you want to add um, the signature to a document, mm -hmm. as I said, you can do that kind of thing. Um, the next step for us uh, this evening is going to be actually creating this in the dimensions that they need for the stamp so right. that we can upload it to the system and actually create this stamp and have it ordered. Okay. All right. In the meantime, it's time for oh, it's heading on over to your newsroom. Holy moly, this hour is flying. Just like that. Good. Just like that. All right. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Don't go away because we are going to be uh, showing you how to take our uh, Sasha signature now and actually place it onto the stamp uh, template so that, uh, so that the system there will be able to uh, create uh, an actual stamp so that she just bang, 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 and we're done and done. No having to sign 300 checks in a single night. <laughs> All right, off to the newsroom. Here is Sasha Dermatis. It's Tuesday, May 12, 2015, and here are the stories we're covering this week. Even autonomous cars can't avoid the inevitable, as four of the nearly 50 self-driving cars on the road have had minor accidents, all apparently the fault of other drivers. A smart cane has been developed by students at Birmingham City University, which recognizes family and friends and alerts the visually impaired user. Paying almost $8 more per share than they're worth, Verizon intends to buy AOL. Google is suspending Map, map Maker after some of the users vandalized Google Maps. <laughs> and Daimler has launched a fully autonomous transport truck. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. If you need website hosting for your website or blog, 
Uh, make sure you check out cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For only $70, you'll get unlimited website hosting. You'll get one free domain name registration, say your own .com, for example. Also, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, unlimited email accounts, and a free a 50 gig uh, backup account for your own personal files as well. There's a lot more to the package. Head on over to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. The best deal you're going to get, only $70. Make sure on checkout you use the coupon code CAT5TV, and that's going to make sure that you get that deal. Back to the newsroom, here's Sasha. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. Four of the nearly 50 self-driving cars now rolling around California have gotten into accidents since September, when the state began issuing permits for companies to test them on public roads. According to a person familiar with the accident reports, two of the accidents happened while the cars were in control. The other two, the person who still must be behind the wheel, was driving. Three involved Lexus SUVs that Google Inc. outfitted with sensors and computing power in its aggressive effort to develop autonomous driving, a goal the tech giant shares with traditional automakers. The parts supplier Delphi Automotive had the other accident with one of its two test vehicles. Both Google and Delphi said their cars were not at fault in any of the accidents, which the company said were minor. Since September, any accident must be reported to the Department of Motor Vehicles. That makes sense. The fact that neither of the companies, that the fact that neither companies nor the state have revealed the accidents troubles some who say the public should have been, should have information to monitor the rollout of technology that its own developers acknowledge is imperfect. In the October accident involving Delphi, the front of its 2014. Audi SQ5 was moderately damaged when, as it was waiting to make a left turn, another car broadsided it. Google, which has 23 Lexus SUVs, would not discuss its three, de its three accidents in any detail. As self-driving cars proliferate, other issues will arise that human drivers have dealt with for decades, notably who's liable for an accident. Each test car re is required to have $5 million insurance. Well, I can say, like, probably these cars have cameras all around them, so it's probably easier to tell who is, in fact, at fault. Oh, sure. Yeah, the, the, the logging the, system of these systems must be astounding, right? And it would have to be, because otherwise insurance wouldn't insure it. Right. They've got to be able to prove who was at fault. You know, it, the only way to make sure that 100% there was never another collision on the road was to, would be to make all of the cars autonomous. Isn't that an interesting point too? And, and uh, people are upset that the companies didn't reveal these accidents and that it was found out by a third party investigation or whatever. But realistically, if it's not the fault of those autonomous cars and autonomous cars are in fact safer than, mm -hmm. as you say, there's there are cameras all around it. So it can see more than I can when I'm sitting in my car. I can't see the guy coming up to, in my blind spot, right? But a, right. an autonomous car can. Exactly. There's no such thing as a blind spot anymore. I just, it's yeah. It's scary and yet awesome and... I, I would like if all of the cars were autonomous because I'm pretty sure that there would never be another accident because they communicate with each other, right? I think you just like the idea because of the whole laziness thing. I, <laughs> I guess <laughs> we're learning a lot about Sasha today. <laughs> <laughs> because I could just sit there and have a mojito. Exactly. <laughs> well, there are drivers behind the wheels of these cars and in 50% of the four accidents that happened, those drivers were were in control so but not at fault also not at fault or or oh maybe uh, who knows maybe. Right? who knows who with knows? those i don't know do you feel Any safe with autonomous cars driving around on the roads <laughs> <laughs> an innovative smart facial recognition cane for the visually impaired will probably be available on the market in the near future the cane gives visually impaired people the ability to identify their family and friends instantly the Explore Mobility Cane, being developed by Birmingham City University students, uses smartphone technology to recognize familiar faces from up to 10 meters away, which some days for me is hard. Um, <laughs> the cane also features GPS functionality to aid navigation. The students have designed the Explore Cane to vibrate when it detects a recognizable individual from a bank of images stored on an internal SD memory card. 
The device will guide users towards friends and family members using an earpiece with audio guidance, with the information being relayed through Bluetooth technology. The team has already presented the Explorer Cane to medical and science professionals in Luxembourg and France and plans to visit organizations in Germany later this year. I think that this is incredible. I also think it will be funny as there are small little glitches. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, is that you? Oh. Mommy? <laughs> I'm just picturing, and I, I hate myself for this, but I'm picturing your uncle across the road going, don't cross, don't cross, and the cane saying, move forward 10 more feet, and there's your <laughs> uncle. No! Yeah, well, these are Watch out. They're gonna also have to perfect hearing the system. impaid. Impaired, so oh, hearing they're, they're is, not hearing impaired oh, no, people. Oh, they're visual. Oh, okay. So, so the as long uncle as should probably as long be as okay. uncle is yelling loud enough. What would be fu funny is if, you, say, you had a relative who was famous on a billboard somewhere, and you walk oh, right. past billboards, and they're like, "It's your cousin <laughs> to the immediate left," and you walk into a wall. <laughs> Not funny. I could see the technology being useful, especially as you, you know, uh, I think it's neat that you were talking about autonomous cars and everything, but that would be uh, uh, kind of well, interesting to see if a uh, use case. I'd love to see a use case. Yeah. Somebody who's actually impacted I mean, by if it. the cane is, is GPS, it has GPS enabled capabilities, yeah. you could really, just the same as you have a GPS navigating your car, it can really help you. Yeah. It would help me because I get lost easily. Just, <laughs> can I throw a, a hypothetical at you? Yeah. I, I'm trying to think, and I'm thinking, where is this useful? Because I'm picturing what? I'm picturing downtown New York and right. a guy walking around and, oh, there's your uncle. Well, what if it's instead family trip to Disney World? Right? Yeah. So... You know, you can participate and y you know where your family is among the crowd and suddenly it makes sense that you can be involved in that without, without you know, having to necessarily be handheld the whole time. Mm -hmm. I love cool. this. This is really cool technology. I mean, I will laugh a little bit at some of the small glitches. I'm sure that they'll figure them out. But. Sure. <laughs> U.S. telecommunications giant Verizon has agreed to buy AOL in a deal worth $4.4 billion. Buying AOL will broaden the amount of advertising Verizon can sell and will increase video production. AOL owns websites such as the Huffington Post, TechCrunch, Engadget, Makers, and AOL.com. Verizon, like UK peers BT and Vodafone, is trying to become more of a one-stop shop for internet services and entertainment. AOL, famous for mailing floppy and compact disks for its services through thousands of mailboxes in the 90s, mailboxes in the 90s, has still still has two million customers for its dial-up internet service. What? Two million customers still use dial-up. Who's still with, doing this? I don't That's know. That's unreal. Yeah. It also becomes became it also became memorable for its messaging service, which would greet users with an audio clip that would cheerfully announce, "You've got mail." Right. AOL chief executive Tim Armstrong will continue to lead the firm if the deal goes through. The transaction is subject to regulatory approval. Really, is a great big move. I think I I'd be interested to see. I, I, I honestly, when I heard this story, I'm, I'm shocked that they're like AOL is still, I guess some people still use it. Do you still use it? The dial up service has 2 million subscribers. I was shocked when Michael Robertson said on Twitter today that people are still using cable TV. That's cable TV. You're still using dial up 2 million people, 2 million people, 2 million people. <sighs> Yeah, I was just using cable until they cut it. I was using real cable cable until yeah. very recently. Dial-up, I kind of got out of like ages ago. <laughs> like t 10 years ago. I wonder too, you mentioned a couple weeks ago about how Facebook is deprecating XMPP. And mm -hmm. fortunately, they haven't yet. I mean, at least it hasn't been rolled out here in Canada, that change, uh, because I'm still able to connect with Pigeon. AOL bought ICQ way back in the day, and ICQ services or AOL Instant Messenger are still up and running. Yeah. And in fact, I still have my ICQ number, 21484632, from how many years ago, <laughs> memorized when I was 12, 13 years old, and, and still have it. That service still exists. So as XMPP is deprecated on Facebook, that's the chat ability to chat using right. other applications. MSN Messenger is gone as well because they bought out Skype to try to grow that 
uh, which is now you know conflicting with sky by the way can you tell the difference in these two logos uh but uh you know will aol instant messenger suddenly become the de facto i still got my number message me weird huh who knows who knows Google introduced MapMaker in 2008 as a tool to allow users to edit the information on their Google Maps service, similar to the way Wikipedia allows users to edit its pages. MapMaker allowed users to draw features, adding roads, rivers, green spaces, and local businesses. But some, more. But some edits, such as an image of its Android mascot urinating on an Apple logo, were not as welcome. You know who you are. Last month, Google apologized for the Android graffiti, but since then, several other MapMaker hacks have been spotted. The MapMaker service relied on a mixture of Google reviewers and trusted users to moderate con contributions. We trusted you. Google now admits that this approach has not been adequate. Google is suspending the service temporarily in response to the vandalism. Google did admit that it will take some time to fix. Hilarious. <laughs> um, firstly, I will say that a lot of the Wikipedia stuff also cannot be trusted. There are, an sure. there are entire events on Wikipedia that actually never happened. But How people... many times have people died on Wikipedia only to find yeah. out? No, they haven't. They yeah. have not. No, I hear you there. So the fact that they were using something similar to Wikipedia, which is known for its... Uh, shady <laughs> truth. I think what it boils down to is that we live in a connected society that wants to be able to contribute to the news and to right. the services that are available out there. Look at Twitter and Facebook and it's like, does anyone, uh, the news comes out the day after I've already read about it on Twitter. Right. That's crazy. But yes. that's the world that we live in. So they want to be able to, if I own a business, I want to be able to add it to Google Maps without trouble. And then somebody takes advantage of that creates wacky imagery it is true now everything is instant so yeah i i kind of think it's hilarious <laughs> i would be a really i guarantee you that was distributed all around google headquarters oh. before the uh, the oh. apology was issued <laughs> i guarantee you a week ago tonight at a world record setting ceremony at the hoover dam Daimler Trucks North America unveiled the Freightliner Inspiration Truck to a group of international news media and investment analysts. The Freightliner Inspiration Truck is the first licensed autonomous commercial vehicle to operate on an open public highway in the United States. The Freightliner Inspiration Truck underwent extensive testing before the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles granted its license to operate on the public roads on this, in the state. Earlier on Tuesday, Nevada Governor Brian Standalov formally granted this, the license to operate the vehicle in the state. Affixing a license plate to the truck and taking part in the ceremonial first drive of the truck in autonomous mode. <laughs> the, the Freightliner Inspiration Truck is equipped with the highway pilot sensors and computer hardware is based upon a series of production Freightliner Cascadia, upon a series production Freightliner Cascadia Evolution fully certified to meet all U.S. federal motor vehicle safety standards. The highway pilot links together a sophisticated set of camera technology and radar systems with lane stability, collision avoidance, speed control, braking, steering, and other monitoring systems. This combination creates a level three autonomous vehicle operating system that can perform safely under a range of highway driving conditions. I don't know what level it goes up to, but level three sounds good. The autonomous vehicle system is responsible for maintaining legal speed, staying in the selected lane, keeping a safe braking distance from other vehicles, and slowing or stopping the vehicle based on traffic and road conditions. The vehicle monitors changes in, con in conditions that require transition back to the driver controls when necessary in highway settings. The driver is in control of the vehicle for exiting the highway on local roads and for docking and do in docking for making deliveries. More information is available at FrightlinerInspiration.com. Now, four of the 50 cars um, in the first story <laughs> were involved in collisions that may or may not have been. It was but it, probably not them. However, in the same news day, Robbie, we now have freight trains, freight trains, freight trucks, 
big heavy train <laughs> on trains. <laughs> Just driving along. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. For one thing, Spice Jacks wants to say that you're, you're, the way that you say f- freight is wrong. It, no, not wrong. Just oh. with the Canadianism. Oh. Freightliner sounds a lot like Freightliner. It's a, it does sound like it. <laughs> yeah. And and it's funny because it, it really, the, my immediate thought is I saw a movie when I was a kid that scared the bejeebers out of me. One of the, I don't know what it was or whatever, but there was a truck. It was a ghost truck coming toward him and he just couldn't get away. And it was like this, that was a nightmare mm-hmm. of a scenario. I don't know what it was, but I, it just reminded me of that. And thinking about a, a ghost truck or some a, a transport truck that is autonomous Something is also ominous about that. Yes. But yet, in reality, the technology is so incredible what Daimler and Freightliner are doing uh, with this truck. Being able to, for example, all, all the trucks in a fleet communicating with one another and lining themselves up in an aer- aerodynamic way so that they save 6% of their fuel. Right. Is astounding. So, but as you say, because all the other cars on the road are not autonomous, exactly. now we've got the problem of okay, well, what if someone else makes a mistake? Mm-hmm. I think that every vehicle then should be autonomous. If they're going to start doing this, they might as well have go all every, out. Go all out because I see on the highway here, and I don't know if it's like this all over the world, but I assume it is that people are rude to the trucks. So if the truck needs to get into the middle lane because it's going to go under a bridge that can only get into the middle lane, people won't let the truck merge properly. People cut right. trucks off, right? So how would how are the trucks going to respond to these? Human arrogance yeah. is a big problem on the road, and they call it, road what do they rage. call it? Road rage. Right. Really, it's arrogance and self-centeredness mm-hmm. is what it is. And, and you're right. If, if you won't get out of the way for a truck to pull in, then you know what's to stop an accident from happening and and you know you see trucks getting clipped by bridges and overpasses and things uh but if everyone was autonomous they would automatically move and let and it would be this constant flow it would be perfect that's where we're headed we need to take people out of traffic (laughs) (laughs) i refer back to my mojito comment (laughs) <laughs> For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the Category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thank you, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Sasha, uh, Dreamweaver909 saying uh, that uh, he would actually really do well with that cane, the ability to be able to walk around and, and yeah. recognize faces a little easier. And uh, I think that's neat. I so am looking forward question. to that happening. There was another story recently. I like the cane story and I like the pen story for people with Parkinson's. All these ways to help yeah. make life easier or more comfortable. Could uh, autonomous vehicles be the, the next step for visually impaired people as well or elderly as well? I think that that would be a thing eventually when 95% or more cars were mm. autonomous. Right? It's because, a tough thing, eh? Because right now there needs to be a fully licensed driver behind the wheel in mm-hmm. case the car needs to kick back to the driver. Right, yeah. Like these Freightliner trucks are not allowed to drive through town Without a autonomously. Person. Right. Would mm-hmm. that be easier or harder on the, dr- the driver? Right? To kind of check out? Imagine if you were on a really long highway. These are how accidents happen in, in yeah. the trucking industry. What what's the number one reason of accidents? It's Probably falling nodding asleep, off. nodding off. No. Yeah, and and so if you could nod off, because it's the it's the constant line blinking by at nighttime, and it's and you're just driving in a straight line, and who mm-hmm. wouldn't fall asleep in that scenario? It's right. very peaceful. So, so you turn on the music, you roll the window down. Well, what if you could actually jump up in the bunk, and, and this thing could drive for eight hours? Right, and then like a beeping would happen if it needed you it to take you the, up. the wheel. Yeah, and if for some reason you didn't respond, it would probably safely pull aside. Hmm, I like this. A lot of... I a, think that they should probably have an autonomous docking system, though, because I know that there's cars that do the parallel parking. I'd like ooh. to see a truck do a backup 40-foot oh, container docking. I would like to see... They'll the, put these things to the test for sure. Oh, I can see that happen. I wonder how much that would cost. 
I love it. People I in the chat room mentioning the Johnny Caps from Fifth Element. That's what comes to mind too when, when it's completely autonomous. <gasps> With Mila Jovovich. And and you just <laughs> jump in the cab and it, yeah. where are you headed? You know? I I love this. I worked really hard to learn how to drive standard, but then I would give that up for an autonomous car. <laughs> just get in my car and press a little button and away I go. Brilliant. Like it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump back to it, folks. Uh, interesting conversations and, and love the way technology is, is kind of changing in our world and changing the way that we look at uh, the stuff that is so normal to us. And now mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's being flipped on its head. It's like now everyone's using tablets and smartphones. They're not using computers. That's right. Wow. How, how has that changed in our, you know, the last 10, 10 years? So, all right, Sasha. So we have created and scanned and touched up this image for your stamp. Yes. One of the things that I want to want to do is is just kind of crop it to the edges a little bit, just to kind of clean it up. Doesn't really matter because we're going to be able to lay this out. So let's just crop it. And I just want to be quick about it. We could create an image that is um, to the right proportions. I'm going to call this stamp dot ping. Yeah. All right. You remember yes. why? All right, and then export that. So now I've got a file on my desktop called stamp.ping. Um, you could create the file in the right dimensions, but they're going to they're going to work just fine with uh, with this. Look at how much smaller it is now that we've pulled that grain from the background. Isn't that crazy? Because there's just not as much visual data. It's just it's just your signature, and I've pulled all that data from the background that was taking up 15 megs worth of space. In Linux, I'm just going to copy, but you can just browse to this. Let's go over here and go choose by size. And we had said we're going to go with the two, oh, and now it's taken me out because we've taken too long. Cat5.tv slash stamp. All right. Shop, Shop now. now. So exciting. Choose by size. There's our two and three quarter inch stamp. Right. There we go. And we're going to simply do this. Okay, so we're here. We're getting ready to lay it out. This, this is what you were talking about, how you could enter yeah. text, right? Yeah. Well, we don't want to do that. So you actually click the X. Yeah. Clear your canvas. Clean nice. slate. Clean slate. Okay. And now you can't actually sign that space, but we've already created the image. So let's upload mm-hmm. that and see how it goes. So let's go add image. Browse. We're going to jump onto our desktop, go to stamp.ping. There it is. And upload image. Oh, please select. I thought I did. Stamp.ping. Open. Ah, uh, you know what? I think it's probably telling us that it's maximum, maximum file size. size, one megabyte. Okay. Okay. So it's a little bit too big for this. Okay. Because so. we're 1.4. So how do we correct that? Really, really easy way is to simply shrink down the image ever so slightly. But keep in mind, we can do that because we're working with an image that is huge in the resolution as far as this goes, 2855 by 2051. Okay. Do you want to have that thingy connected? The the link thing? I know what what we're talking about. Proportions? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I know know what you're saying. (laughs) That's this, the chain link. Yes. Chain link means if I change the width, it's going to automatically change the height. Because if I do image size and I turn that off and I go 1500, watch what happens to my image. It's going to warp it. Yeah. See that? Oh, yeah. That, that, okay. that looks... So you want to keep oh. it proportional. We go image, scale image, keep it proportional with this chain link. And let's just try uh, 2000 by okay. 1437. Now, I'm going to change this. Now that I've done that, I'm going to change this to inches and see that it is, in fact, bigger than three inches wide. And it is. It's 27 inches. <laughs> <laughs> My signature will never be that big. Right. But I want to make sure that the resolution of the image that I'm working with and that I'm saving is going to be bigger than the requirement. Because right. if I have an image that's only one inch wide and I scale it up, it's going to look all grainy and it's going to look terrible. It's not going to work out for you. So now I'm going to change that to sync because it tends to give a better um, a better uh, a- anti-aliasing, okay. less uh, anomalies on the edge. Now I'm going to resave by clicking export. There okay. it goes. Now we should hopefully have an image that's under one meg. Oh, it's actually bigger. That didn't work out in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> All right, let's make it a little bit smaller even still. How did it possibly get bigger, Sasha? I don't 
don't know. All right. What have you done? I think that this was you. Time travel. Hmm. Let's try this. Okay. File. Export. Stamp. Here it goes. <laughs> when I made it smaller, <laughs> it got bigger. Okay. We're getting oh, we're really, so really close. close. 1.2 <gasps> megs. And... I'm going to keep an eye on my how many inches it is. It's still 20, so who, we're perfectly fine. So let's do 1,000. Then we're, we know we're going to be down there, and it's going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. So if I view that at full size, it looks like that. It's still huge. It's way bigger than anything that we need on this. And the reason for that is because it is it, we scanned it at 1,200 DPI. So we can scale it down, and we're not losing quality. If right. you were scaling up, you would lose quality. It's pretty silly that Staples, in all honesty, only supports a one meg file because, after all, only two million people use dial-up. <laughs> two million. That's nuts. That's, that's a lot of people. And a ping file under one meg? Okay, we've got it down to 621K, so that's fine. Upload. Here we go. Here's the moment. And they say a minimum of 570 pixels wide. We've uploaded one that's, uh, what did I say, a thousand pixels? Okay, return to designer. There it is. And you see what I'm saying about it's going to be kind of right in the middle with a lot of white space? Right. See that? So what you could have done was write it a little bit you know, more on a wide, you know, a little bit wider. Right. If you wanted to. This is going to be centered into the stamp in this particular case. So that's right. what it's going to look like on the stamp when you stamp. Not granular like that. It'll but it's gonna look, it's gonna look good. But that's that. Well, that's what it. That's how it works. Nice. There you go. Add it to your cart. Yes. Good to go. Please confirm. All right. Looks good. Saving the job, and we're done. I mean, you got to pay. That's it. There you have it, for folks. So a couple of the different things that we learned today in order to uh, to understand how to get to the point where we've got this stamp. So what we're going to get is an actual um, self-inking stamp with mm -hmm. your signature and, and uh, all that that you can stamp on the back of receipts. Exactly. When you're waitressing. I will send you a copy of my stamp on a piece of paper. Can you stamp it on like, like a business card? Or oh, yeah, I'll stamp. Well, no, our business, business cards, cards? are... I'm out of business cards, oh, okay. firstly. And secondly, ours are kind of cards. glossy and awesome. Oh, yeah. So I feel like ink won't stick on it easily. You can buy a hamburger from her, and she will stamp the back of the receipt. That's right. You <laughs> Just want me buy to a roll of receipt paper so that you can send everyone <laughs> send receipts. Send everybody receipts. I am loving this. My very favorite episode ever, episode 399. Hard to believe. Next week, we are going to actually be having a very special 400th episode. And I uh, hope you can join us. We're going to do things a little bit differently because people have been saying, you guys should really do a cooking show. And while that's absolutely not possible just because of time constraints, uh, next week for our 400th episode, we're going to do it around the barbecue. And we're just going to hang out, have a little chat about uh, where Category 5 has come from. We're going to talk about why we do what we do. And we're going to enjoy some burgers. Some veggie burgers. Hope you can join burger. us. Yeah, make sure you you know grab grab some some fire up the barbecue at six thirty or so, and then you can join us. Yeah. All right. That's the best. We'll be eating burgers. You can eat some burgers too. Perfect. So we look forward to seeing you then. It's hard to believe four hundred weeks. How many? That's four hundred hours 400 plus the hours production hours. How many hours do you say that you have to do post production? Oh, it's like many hours many many hours <laughs> yeah imagine the it's amount. like more than a year worth of hours do you think in 400 episodes i'm not good at math yes. wow yes. oh yeah oh yeah i guess so because 52 yeah. weeks in a year so yeah it'd be wow it'd be an astronomical amount if you were to add it all up and write a paycheck right <laughs> At $5 an hour, you'd have $2 billion. Nice. <laughs> anyway, that's it. that's it for us for tonight. Um, if you sent in a question we didn't get to it tonight, make sure you tune in again. And not next, well, next week, do tune in, but we won't be having any viewer questions next week. Uh, but we will have viewer questions on episode number 401, and we will make sure to get your questions in. I know, there are great questions that we did not get to. I pre-read them and wish that we got to them. Oh, oh, it's only an hour long, they say in the chat room. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight and looking forward to seeing you around the Barbie next Tuesday night. See ya. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. 
Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.